Welcome to Brockton Community Access's debate with the Ward 6 candidates for City Council. Uh, BCA brings you all the election coverage going into the November 7th election. And remember, there is still time to register to vote. I believe it's the 18th. If you're watching this after the 18th, well, you missed the deadline. Anyway, we want everybody to exercise their uh, democratic right and vote. So we're going to start with uh, candidate uh, openings. And uh, we did a, a, a wonderfully scientific uh, drawing out of a, a water pitcher. And uh, first up is, uh, is Joanne. Welcome, Joanne. Hello. Thank you, Mark. Hello. My name is Joanne Zygmunt, running for Ward 6, Brockton City Council. I'm running because I think that we can do more for our neighborhoods, that we can do better as a city. <clears throat> I'd like to thank Mark and everybody here today um, for hosting another debate. Um, and I'd also like to thank all the voters out there as well who voted for me in the preliminary election. Thank you very much. Um, I'm honored as well to, um, to have the support of John Drzinskis, who didn't make it through the preliminary election, but who remains a very active and inspirational community leader in our ward. Um, I have over 10 years of experience in small business and nonprofit development, which I'm hoping to bring to the City Council. That includes a lot of experience with managing budgets and fundraising. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in political science and a master's in urban planning, so I think that I have the right mix of education and real life experience to fight for you. I will be an independent and a strong voice on the City Council, and I ask for your vote on November 7th. Thank you. I love it, made for television. I don't have to ring the bell yet. Uh, we will go to uh, Jack Lally. Uh, you might have to ring the bell. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Jack Lally. I'm uh, your current Ward 6 City Councilor. I also want to start off by saying thank you to uh, all the voters who put their faith in me in 2015 and all the voters who put their faith uh, in me in the preliminary election in September. Uh, you know, I appreciate the support. I feel that we've gotten a lot accomplished in the year and a half I've been in office uh, and we're you know continuing to get things done. We're uh, getting a sports complex up on Route 37. Uh, we're getting roads paved. The Ashfield School was kept open. Uh, we kept out uh, businesses that wanted to take advantage of Brockton's uh, resources that you know, would have only, you know, would have only hurt us. It's, um, I feel, I feel that we've had, you know, a successful, you know, a successful time. Uh, and I look forward, you know, with your support to continuing to represent the people of Ward 6. Thank, Thank you. you. You almost got the bell there. You were right. Okay. Before I go on, I just, I neglected to introduce uh, my, my two uh, panelists and uh, they're familiar faces to Brockton. We have uh, Steve Foote, who was the past chair of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, longtime resident. And we have Shana Barnes, who is the counselor at large presently, but uh, heading towards retirement. So thank you both for being here. Um, what we're going to do is we'll start right with the questions. Uh, we'll go to Steve first and then Shana and go back and forth and flip the order. It makes it a little easier with two candidates than, uh, than, than three. So Steve, you're first. Well, I have to open up with the question that the people on the street always tell me. I'm glad you asked that, so I'm going to ask it again so we'll get you both on the record. Now that marijuana is, uh, recreational use of marijuana is legal, do either of you use marijuana or any other drugs, and would you take a drug test if asked? I'm going to start with Jack. I do not use marijuana. Uh, actually, I do, I do use uh, drugs for arthritis. That's prescribed drugs, I promise. Um, yeah, no, I don't, do, I don't use marijuana or any other illegal substance. I'm perfectly willing to be tested uh, right now, um, in the future, any, any time. You know, that's a simple answer. Okay, and I'll go right to Joanne. No, I do not use marijuana or any other illegal drugs. Um, I personally would submit to a drug test if asked, however I don't think it should be a requirement. I think it infringes on people's rights and as long as you are doing your job and there is no suspicion of um, abusing that, then I think you should not have to submit to that. Okay. Go right to Shana's first question. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. Um, so I was just actually looking today at some of your materials and you both champion uh, the 
school department and the Brockton Public Schools and, and the district as a whole. And as you know, we are in the Brockton Kids, in the middle of the Brockton Kids Count campaign uh, and on the, uh, the verge of going into litigation with the state for the Chapter 70 uh, in a misappropriation, I should say, probably of the funding. So with that said, how would you specifically work with the school committee, in particular the Ward 6 uh, school committee member, if she's to be reelected, Joyce Azak, in uh, securing more funding, making sure that the state actually implements the recommendations that they put into the Reform Act several years ago. How would you specifically do that to work with, with the school committee member? Okay, I'll start with Joanne. So I think it's absolutely important to work with the school committee member, no matter who that person is. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that Brockton did not get a fair shake in what has happened with the funding formula changes. Um, so I would work with the councilwoman um, to definitely lobby at the state level. I know that there is a lot of meetings happening up there um, and a lot of advocacy being done on that front, especially with the Brockton Kids Count campaign as well. Um, so that for sure would be um, an emphasis for me. I do think as well that um, the city needs to be in better financial health in order to support its school system. If you look at a lot of other communities, the cities or towns put more money than just the state formula into their schools. And I believe that we really need to work on a wider scale in Brockton to get us to a point where we're financially stable and thriving so that we can put more money towards things like schools and things like roads um, and the other things that are important to people in the ward as well too. Okay, Jack, same question. <clears throat> All right. Um, as counselor already, I have worked with our school committee woman, Joyce Azak, um, to protect, you know, protect uh, the, our, our schools that both I represent and the, uh, the city at large. Uh, the funding changes made up at the state were, it was, they, they really robbed Brockton out of, Brockton was the, the largest loss uh, out of every, uh, any community in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. We lost six million dollars. The, the closest competition was four million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, further losses and cuts and everything upon that has only made it worse. As, as counselors, both you and I have already uh, supported actions to move forward with that lawsuit and to make sure that we get uh, you know, what our students deserve. Uh, as counselor, I lobbied with our school committee woman, Joyce Azak, to uh, keep the Ashfield School open. And these are things that I fully intend to continue to do. Thank you, candidates. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, Steve. Uh, as you're both, I'm sure, aware, uh, I've been a Ward 6 resident for 58 years, so I know my way around the ward, and I've um, through the ward almost all the time. Um, so here's my question. There are many streets being accepted for repair. Ward 6 street repair is always one of the biggest things everybody complains about in the campaign. Tina Rav is finally being repaired. But why do we only see progress during the three months before a contested election? Start with Jack. Hmm? All right. So the money to pave Tina Ave and Norwich Road, $3 million total, came out of the two th fiscal year uh, 2017 budget, which means that it was voted on and cleared in the six months after uh, I took, you know, I took office. So what happened is we have the money, they have to put it out to bid. It's a long process. They have to wait for the company that signs on to pave it to actually have time in their schedule to pave it. You know, we, we go for companies that are, um, you know, that do a good job. So a lot of people do as well. So we have to wait until we get on their calendar. We also have to make sure that we have somebody in there before they come in to repair all the pipes. So there's a lot that takes place before people are actually uh, tearing up the old street. I would have I would have liked to see work begin in November of 2016, but you know sometimes the 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 process as it is takes a little longer than that. But rest assured, we did start uh, 
We did start before the election. Okay, um, minute 30, Joanne. I think there's a lot to, to, um, to be desired on the road situation in Ward 6. We have among the worst infrastructure in the city. Um, we have a lot of private ways which are talked about a long time, which means that these roads aren't eligible for paving. They should have been made public ways a long time ago. Um, there is costs that's associated with turning private ways into public ways, which again comes down to the city budget. So again, it comes back to the city being in stable, financial, healthy condition so that we can put more money towards roads. Because at the moment, the only money we get for roads is coming from the state. The city isn't putting any in. Um, so we really need to build that up so that we can start improving them at a faster rate. I'd also like to look at um, ways that we can bulk accept private ways, potentially those that don't necessarily need to be surveyed, some of which are in our ward, um, and see if we can accept those as one group instead of having to go through the process of accepting all these individual roads. There's about 60 or 70 of them in our ward. It's going to take forever. That's not fair to the people on those roads who are paying tax money. And finally, I'd really love to have a discussion um, with, with the folks that are in charge of the streets to learn and push a little bit more to see how we can make the road improvements more evidence-based. At the moment, it's kind of pick and choose on which road gets fixed and which one doesn't. It's not always necessarily based on the condition of the road itself or the traffic that it gets. Um, so I'd like to introduce some transparency into that system as well. Okay. Get your answer, Steve. I did. Just making sure. Okay. So, Shana, next question. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> um, talk to us about your feelings on uh, term limits for city councilors, pro or con? I'm going to start with Joanne. So, I'm new to politics. Um, have I never been in elected office? I do um, appreciate that things sometimes do take time. So, I think there definitely is a con sometimes to having short term limits. Um, or short numbers of years, and then, yes, term, sorry, term limits. Um, two years, two or three times in a row, I think would probably be sufficient. I do think we do need fresh and new blood in the city, new ideas, new approaches, and that only comes um, when new people get on the city council. And it also, as an incumbent as well, there's always an advantage. You know, they have their name recognition already known. So it's hard without excessive amounts of money to beat long-term incumbents as well too, which kind of is an unfair advantage in a way. Some people argue it's fair. So um, I would definitely be open to proposals for term limits. At the moment, I'm not particularly strong either way on it. Thank okay. you. Jack? Uh, term limits are talked about for you know, about every political office there is. Um, if the, you know, if if people want term limits, I would be absolutely uh, happy to put that up on the ballot, you know, right next to everyone else's name so the people could cast their vote uh, and, you know, we could determine really how they feel. It is essential to have, um, you know, people coming in, refreshing the process. You know, you have the same people over and over again. You just get the same stale ideas and uh, sort of... So sometimes you can be stuck in your ways, mm -hmm. is, 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 is what it is. So every once in a while, you know, having, having people in there and, uh, you know, shaking things up is, uh, is part of the reason I ran in the first place. So it's, uh, you know, it's something that certainly I would, I would absolutely love to put out uh, onto a ballot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next question is Steve. Uh, the village section of Ward 6 is unchanged over the past two years in terms of commercial business. It's an unsightly overgrown mess. What are your plans for improvement in the village section and how soon will we see any uh, progress? Start with Jack. All right. Well, the, the village needs uh, a lot of investment. Uh, I know that people have been building single family homes down there, uh, but there are a lot of locations where there are businesses, have been businesses, uh, and continue, you know, there could still continue to be businesses. Um, I know that right now the city of Brockton has a, uh, you know, revitalization plan put out by the uh, Office of Planning and Economic Development uh, that starts with downtown, then they move to Campello, and then they move to Montello. When they address Montello, they will also be addressing the village. You know, it's Montello and the village. Uh, with things like 
you know, housing for people, you know, market rate housing for people to use the commuter rail to go into Boston and things like that uh, to really bring the area, bring the area together, you know, stores, shops, things like that that um, really breathe new life into the, into the situation. Uh, the area is also excellent for food processing and things like that. We have uh, Uno's Pizzeria makes all of their frozen, uh, frozen food right near the Howard Street Bridge. Uh, Montelio's is right there. Mm -hmm. We have a, a very close to the highway. It's a fantastic area to capitalize on. We just need a united effort to capitalize on that. I've tried to find people, different, par different departments and organizations in the city are charged with doing similar things. I think that we really need to uh, sort of centralize our efforts on uh, gathering business and welcoming people into the area. Okay, Joanne, two minutes. Two minutes. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of creative opportunity for the Montello area because the train station is right there, the village as well. When I say Montello, I mean both. Um, the transportation links are excellent and there is a lot of space there to do a lot of great stuff. I think the first step is to, and as I've been walking around neighborhoods, I've been hearing a lot of this. I think that the first step is to see if we can um, set up a neighborhood association. Um, and or a crime, crime watch group. That area has had some crime recently that has been of concern to residents. I think both those things will help organize residents um, into groups that then make it easier to actually involve them in the planning process as well too. So when City Hall um, and the planners are ready to come in and start looking at the development plan for Montello and the village, there will be these groups that they can approach and interact with to learn what people really want there. The other issue is that there is a lot of polluted land in that area, of course. Um, so we need to look at options for cleaning that up um, and what we can put there, if not residential. Can we put a raised garden bed and maybe do a community garden? Is it possible to do a small dog park there? Um, we also have to look at how much city land is there and make sure that we're paying attention to how that land is being sold and to whom and for what, and that residents are aware of that, that it's all transparent, um, and that they're happy with whatever it might be that's planned for their neighborhoods. Um, so I think, I think there's a lot of things, um, and for me as well, it links into my bigger picture for looking at ways to make Brockton more business friendly. Brockton's got a bad reputation. Um, generally speaking, I've heard many different ways in which the city isn't particularly business friendly, particularly for small businesses and startups, and I think we need to look at both of those issues as well, which would help improve commercial development in, in um, Montello, but also in the city as a whole. Thank you. Okay. Shana. Yes. Uh, so last night, excuse me, at the Brockton Public Library, the Governor's Black Advisory Commission, they came down and they had a listening session uh, to just get some information from folks from, you know, communities of color as to what are some of the major issues that are, are pressing to them that they want to bring back to the state to possibly have some um, action taken. And while at the meeting, uh, several members or several of the, the community members that came, they brought up some things about mental health um, and about just physical health, nutrition, things like that, uh, things of that nature. How would you encourage, now understanding that in Ward 6, neither of the, the two hospitals that we have nor the health center is located in, your, in, uh, in the area. How would you, um, I guess, encourage or promote healthy lifestyle, uh, you know, checking on your, uh, just emotional health, physical health, mental health, how would you do that uh, to your community members to, you know, kind of come to the, the ends that you all are talking about, a more vibrant Ward 6, a more uh, healthy Ward 6, a more visible Ward 6. How would you do that in using health initiatives? Joey first. There, is, uh, there are a lot, and I'm sure you're aware of the many great resources that are available in Brockton and the greater Brockton area for mental health issues, for um, survivors of abuse and sexual assault, um, for elderly folks, for folks who are caring for their um, um, ailing parents. Uh, the problem is communication, um, and I have seen it a lot walking on the streets, um, talking to folks. There are a lot of people that, that, there was one elderly woman who didn't even know Brockton had to dial a bat service. She didn't know that for five bucks round trip, she can call these people up, schedule a time, and get a ride. 
Um, I think what I, what I would really in particular love to see in, in our ward, um, and this does come down to funding again, which ultimately everything always does, but there are grants available for this sort of thing. Um, I would love to see community boards throughout Ward 6 where flyers can be posted and information for residents to access. Convenience stores, I've spoken to a couple of owners of convenience stores in our area. They'd be totally willing to put up a weekly flyer that might list events or resources available to people. Um, I think that there's opportunity with the library, for example, to because I hear this a lot as well, too, that there's a lot of things happening downtown, but not much happening in Ward 6. Mm -hmm. I think there's an opportunity with the library to reach out and host events at Brookfield or Ashfield School as a venue, perhaps, um, or at some of the private venues like the Polish White Eagles Club or Tin Race. Um, I think there's a lot more that we can do to let people know about the resources that are available, because I really don't think it's, it's the lack of resources, it's just people don't know about them. Um, so I think that's number one. Thank you. Okay, Jack, a minute and a half. It, uh, it all comes down to connection. It does. We do have, we do have a lot of resources, uh, both nonprofits and organizations with the state and the city. Uh, stuff like uh, the city has a champion plan for uh, people addicted to drugs. Um, you know, the state has all kinds of offices. There's uh, counseling programs in the neighborhood health center. It really does come down to uh, connecting people with those resources, and on a on a more on a uh, you know on a, on a deeper level, it comes down to the resources connecting with each other. It comes down to people knowing somebody's here with a problem that my organization doesn't really you know address, but I know where to send them. Uh, the city and nonprofits, um, you know, don't always talk. We have we have quite a bit of nonprofits. Um, I think that we'd be better off really focusing on uh, developing new businesses in the community, uh, opposed to nonprofits. But with the nonprofits that we currently have in the city, we we got to make sure that they're being properly utilized. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to do one quick question. I got the seven minute cue, so I got to do my calculations and make sure you guys get the two minutes. So my question is, and I'll start with Jack and then go to Joanne, and I'm, I'm going to try to do a one minute answer and then I'm going to ding the bell. It's, co it's not complex. Um, Ward 6 does not encompass the downtown, as we know, but downtown is important to every counselor and every resident of the city of Brockton. What would you do personally to jumpstart redevelopment in downtown. I'm going to start with Jack. We have to make sure that the city <clears throat> that the city is competitive, the set, that the city is welcoming to businesses and organizations that want to develop here and you know we have to continue to you know make the city the best it can be. Right now uh, the uh, Last year, the city council approved a uh, downtown redevelopment plan, which includes a new parking garage that's almost entirely state funded, um, and other developments, including nor uh, more businesses and more housing, market rate housing. Um, it really comes down to, as you said, this is it's not Ward Six, but the city council makes decisions for the whole city of Brockton. So we can't turn a blind eye to any other ward or any other situation and just say, Oop, it's, oops, it's not in my area. Uh, it's something that affects downtown, it affects uh, Ward 6 as well. Ward 6 is you know, five, 10 minutes away from downtown. Okay, Joanne, your idea for something for downtown. Um, I would love to see more um, public art downtown. Um, our art students at the schools and just kids in general um, trying to paint some of the signal boxes, trying to um, put in some planters, take care of some of those um, areas. Um, I'd like to see more responsibility from some of the businesses that are already down there in terms of maintaining their shop fronts and see what we can do about that in terms of um, passing fines or creating a set of rules for that. Um, but most importantly, ultimately, I do think it does come down to making Brockton a friendly place to do business. Um, at the moment, it's difficult to access information. Permitting and licensing often is a very long and complicated process. And for entrepreneurs and small businesses, and small businesses employ the most people in America, not the big CVSs and Walgreens and all the corporates, 
Um, we really need to look at creative ways to use vacant space, um, perhaps at lower rates for a short amount of time, um, and look at other outside-the-box ideas for how to do that. Well, I guess a half an hour is really a lot quicker than I thought it was. We did 45 <laughs> with three flies. candidates, and my pen just uh, broke, but that's okay. So we're going to go to the closing statements at this point. You each get up to two minutes for closing, and the order was predetermined, so Joanne is first. Thank you. <clears throat> so my name again is Joanne Zygmunt, running for Ward 6 City Council. You can learn a lot more about me on my website, which is Joanne, J-O-A-N-N-E-F-O-R, Brockton.com. That's Joanne for Brockton.com. Um, if you have any particular questions for me, you can also call me anytime on 508-521-9891, and I'd be happy to talk about any details with you um, or any specific concerns that you have. I do think that... Um, Real life experience and education, both of which I have, are going to make the difference for moving Ward 6 and the city forward um, with some new and creative ideas. I do consider myself to be an entrepreneur. I've been involved with a lot of startup businesses. Um, and I feel, like what, I feel like I know what those folks go through um, and the challenges that they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we're going to get more of them into the city, um, then I feel like I've definitely got the experience to help with that. Um, I also do think it's important to have experience with financial management, um, which I do um, as well. We've got a lot of money problems in the city. I think sometimes people don't really understand how bad it is. Um, we're talking about mega water infrastructure pur purchases, whether it's a desalinization plant or hooking up to, into the MWRA. Um, we're talking about roads that need serious repairs. Um, we're talking about our school system, which at the moment is at a significant loss. And all that comes down to having a thriving and healthy budget for the city. And I feel like I can really contribute to that as a city councillor. Um, so I hope you vote on November 7th, um, and I ask for you to vote for me if you think that the pace of change has been too slow. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Uh, Jack. All right. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I want to... You know, thank everyone once again uh, who put this together, uh, everyone who voted for me and who has supported me and, uh, you know, continues to do so. Uh, we've got, you know, I feel we have gotten a lot done. We've made more streets, we've made more private streets public than any other counselor uh, that's held the office before me. Uh, we've worked on paving roads. We've worked on taking care of quite a lot of issues that just come up throughout the day. Uh, my email address is jacklally at comcast.net, and my cell phone number is 508-410-0330. If I miss your call, I will return your call within 24 hours. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. The, respond the counselor's job is to be a representative and a resource. Even if we do not have jurisdiction over the issue that uh, you are concerned with, we can help you contact and work with whoever that might be. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what we've accomplished so far, and I look forward to continue to serve as, uh, as your counselor. Thank you. Well, I just do want to thank both the candidates. Um, nice. Uh friendly debate. I want to thank the two panelists, Steve Foote and Shana Barnes, and uh, I want to thank my crew over here at Brockton Community Access uh, for bringing you this. Um, make sure you take a look at channels 9, 12, and 98 for election coverage and uh, local community programming, but most of all, make sure you go out and vote. 9.5 percent in the preliminary was not good. We want to quadruple that at least. So make sure you go out and vote on election day, November 7th. Thank you very much for joining us.